Let's start off with a story from Arlington, VA, where they just became the second U.S. market after Baltimore to offer transportation company Super Pedestrians seated scooters as a part of their shared scooter service named Link. Finally, there's something for those of us out here who want to get somewhere but don't want to use our legs or actually stand up for that matter. Matter of fact, why don't you go ahead and create one with uh, doors, uh, windows, AC, heat, speakers. Wait, what? Oh, they've done that already? Oh, well, well, those look like those motorized cars at the grocery store. I'm, I'm sorry. And, and those ones at Giant, they look fun. They really do. But I can't bring myself to ride one since some people actually need them. Arlington has given us a way to get that same experience without being selfish or ableist. By the way, let's head over to Capitol Hill for this next story to get the latest on the legal saga of another January 6th Capitol ride defendant. Capitol caveman Aaron Mostofsky, the son of a Brooklyn judge, mind you, faces up to seven years in prison for his role in the 2021 riot. Now, Mostofsky was pictured inside the Capitol that day dressed in furs and a stolen Capitol Police riot vest. There you see it right there. Apparently, Captain Caveman has fallen on hard times. He really tried to overthrow the government dressed like a furry. Like, he really did that. Somebody with a judge forefather should have known that this was a bad idea. This, this behavior is what keeps dad in business. Now dad is going to be ashamed at the country club singing, we don't talk about Aaron. Oh, what? Oh, oh, so I'm the only one that watched Encanto? The numbers say I probably am the only one that watched Encanto. Aaron Bostovsky will avoid a trial since the whole world can see him storm in the Capitol look like Conan the Librarian. You're welcome. You, that was good. Conan the Librarian, that was good. All right, pleading guilty is so easy, a caveman could do it. I chose this next story out of Naples, Florida, because common sense isn't always common. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission reported a zoo is not at fault after a 26-year-old man named River Rosenquist lost his arm after ignoring multiple barriers and warnings and sticking his hand inside of a tiger enclosure. The eight-year-old Malaysian tiger that bit him, named Echo, was killed during the rescue. Really, River? We got another Harambe situation, all because this guy messed with an apex predator. Shout out to you, Harambe. This ain't Tiger King. River was already in Florida. He could have visited Carol Baskin anytime he wanted. Instead, he got a tiger killed for doing what tigers do. That tiger didn't go crazy. That tiger went tiger. I want to be empathetic with somebody losing their arm. But when you climb barriers to get close to a 300 pound killing machine, you didn't want that arm all that much. That is not I treasure this limb activity. Now, River was working for a cleaning company and he was supposed to be restricted to the zoo's restrooms and gift shop. So he broke the rules and neglected his duties. Somebody else had to clean pee off the floor while he was headed to surgery for messing with a tiger. To anybody watching this, please know zoo tigers are still tigers. They're not sedated to tolerate you like the ones in Tinder photos or album art from the 80s. You got to leave them alone. Now, let's travel to North Korea for this last story. You know, metaphorically speaking, if you're not Dennis Rodman, don't, don't actually travel there. North Korea's state-run KRT television network released a propaganda video showing dictator Kim Jong-un majestically riding a horse and then staring pensively out to sea. <laughs> hold up, hold up, run that, run that, run that back. Can you run that? Oh my God. That just, do they do like I'm single again, like divorce photo shoots? Because that would be like the greatest one ever. You got all the Tinder photos right there. 
You got all the material. Think about all the pressure that horse was under. Think about, think about all the pressure that horse was under that entire time, and the photographer, and the sun. Oh, my gosh. Is that Kim Jong-un or Supreme Leader Fabio? I need to know. They got Lil' Kim out here looking like the Old Spice guy. That's right, I'm on a horse. The video makes no mention, by the way, of the seven missile tests North Korea has already launched in 2022. Because who needs missiles when your leader looks like he killed a Viking and stole his horse? This is giving Vladimir Putin a run for his shirtless equestrian money. Kim Jong-un raised the bar by doing it in a suit jacket and a shirling. He had wardrobe changes and his horse was dressed like a leather daddy. You can't top that. Wait, what's that? What's a leather daddy? Ask your quiet friend. They'll tell you all about it. Is Biden going to take a shirtless horseback photo to reclaim American dominance on the global stage? I think he has to. That's the, the gauntlet has been laid. Economic sanctions are effective, but the only real way to stop tyranny is with machismo on horseback. All right, which brings me to my favorite story. Come on. Come on. I, come on. The North Korean propaganda video. Kim Jong-un should go ahead and film an action movie because he already spent all of 2022 playing around with horses and explosions. I can't wait to see the, the outtakes going to be wild.